The Whirlpool Masters is in full swing as champions past and present battle for the 2018 title. Some big names have fallen already, and one of the biggest in the sport is about to put his reputation on the line. Earl Strickland's coming up as he begins his challenge for the Mansion Bet Whirlpool Masters of 2018. Here in Gibraltar, 12 champions started out. Inevitably, some have fallen. Others have made a bold opening statement as we continue the opening round of matches. The second day of competition here in Gibraltar saw two former champions clash in the opening match, Alex Pagaline and Alex Laley. Pagaline proved he'd lost none of the skill that took him to the title in 2008 as he saw off the challenge of Laley. Shane Van Boning is keen to repeat his success of 2015 and lay down a marker with a comprehensive win over Darrell Peach. He restricted the Englishman to just two racks as he ran out an 8-2 winner. Success for Van Boning puts him into the quarter-finals where he'll face the winner of our next match, Strickland against Appleton. Pagaline also threw to the quarter-finals where he'll face the winner of the Jason Shaw and Joshua Filler match. Quarter-final spot starting to fill up in the top half of the draw. Carl Boyce threw after beating the defending champion David Alcady. Ralph Suke opened the tournament with a win over Karol Skaversky. And Niels Fine is through after an 8-2 win over Raj Hundal. The format is simple throughout this tournament. Each match a race to eight racks with the winner breaking. There's a 30 second shot clock in operation, but a single extension can be taken per rack. Time then for Darren Appleton against Earl Strickland. And in the opening rack, the Englishman won the lag but came up dry in the break. And following a tense opening, Strickland lost position on the four, opening the way for Appleton to return to the table and clear. In the second, Strickland triumphed in another safety battle, allowing him to not only run the rack, but also to level the match. Time to rejoin Strickland against Appleton. This is now the third commentary from Carl Boys, Ted Lerner and Phil Yates. He's from North Carolina, the Tar Heel State in the United States, nicknamed The Pearl, and he's played some wonderful pool over the years. A record three-time WPA World Nine Ball champion, and he shares the record along with Johnny Archer for being involved in most Moscone Cup wins. He's helped the USA win the Moscone Cup on nine occasions. That fact that he's won three World Nine Ball Championships. No one else has done that. There you see Darren Appleton, 42, from Pontefract, England, nicknamed Dynamite. And he uh, turned to uh, American Pool back in about 2006 and went on a tear through the sport, the likes of which nobody has ever seen in such a short period of time. And there you see that fact there that just left the screen. He was recently inducted into the BCA Hall of Fame. And that just after playing the sport of American pool for 11 years. Incredible. Yeah, he's achieved such a lot in a short space of time. And having known Darren since the age of 15, I've never met another player who is like obsessed with pool more than him. He just loves pool. Even when he's not playing pool, he's at home watching YouTube and talking about it and everything. He just loves pool. And we, we got to see Earl's break there. And the one ball, as we said in a previous match, just before the middle pocket, comes right along into this top pocket. And he's faced with a tough, long, thin shot here. He'll take this on, though, and he's overdone it. But where's the cue ball going? He'll be happy to see that going safe. Darren's a very good thinker of the game. He's the type of player that you always feel like he plays the right shot. And he's just playing a little double up into this area, trying to use the eight or the seven as a blocker. Very good shot, very good shot. You'll often hear 
players say they don't play their opponent. They just play the table. They play what the table gives them. But Darren has a different approach to pool. He likes to study his opponent. He likes to know what his opponent's weaknesses are so he can exploit them out there on the table. I mean, that's scary. Oh, he left that ball. I thought he'd snook at him. Good shot, though. That was a good shot. There you have it. Earl, Earl just gets down and makes them shots like it's over the pocket. And he's created a good opportunity for himself now. He's let the cue ball go a bit there, though. He'd have liked the cue ball a little bit closer. Well, you... Phil, you won't need the shot clock here, I don't think, with, with Earl on the table. I mean, he's just right down on it. Well, that's spooky, because that's exactly what I was just going to say. <laughs> it's not a hindrance to him in the slightest. I think over the years, Earl's just had a tendency to just maybe play a little bit too quick and just make the odd silly mistake where you think the, the rack's over. Well, he absolutely despises slow play. I mean, like I said, I, I spent about 90 minutes with him yesterday at lunch, and, uh, you know, he did uh, talk for 89 of the minutes. <laughs> and he was uh, just going on and on about how they ought to reduce the shot clock to 20 seconds and uh, how he hates slow play. Wow. I'll tell you what, he doesn't hate the way he's run those last couple of racks. Very, very impressive indeed. We're seeing vintage Earl Strickland so far, and right now he leads Darren Appleton by two racks to one. Welcome back, everyone, to the Mansion Bed Whirlpool Masters of 2018. This was the standout first round contest when we saw the draw, and so far it's lived up to expectations. Strickland will be very pleased with the way things are going thus far. Wow, what a break shot wow, this is. Look at this. How many balls he made there? Oh, and he's going to have a shot on the two. The so next balls. ball is the four, so, uh, wow. wow. Just don't even bother with the shot clock here. Three balls. I think that's the most we've seen on the break so far. And these are just sat pretty. I think he might run these balls out in less than the shot clock. Then, then one <laughs> shot clock. Yeah, yeah. You look, look about a, a minute here. Just the easy use of check side there. Second nature. Just got down and played the shot as though it was the most straightforward thing imaginable. Yeah, there you see it. The old nine ball player. Leave that big angle. So he's going to screw this in off two cushions. Well, there you go. Wow. And now quickly, I think that rack took about a minute and five seconds. He's up three to one now. Winner breaks here. It's just a race to eight. So the great Earl Strickland piling on the pressure to Darren Appleton. Darren's going to have to step it up. The expression on Darren Appleton's face speaking volumes at the moment. And he realizes that if Strickland's sorted out the break, he's got issues. Thank oh, yeah, it's a good side. solid oh, hit. But the main thing the there is he was left with one. such a, a good layout. And when you sat in your chair, like Darren now, you're just praying that when he breaks, the balls go a bit scrappy or you've got a tricky first shot. And as you see, well, this dry time break. nothing. Yeah, and a open shot on the one ball for Darren. Now the key shot here is to make sure you try and get down for the two. 
with a good angle so you can get back up for the three. Oh, that's a, a bit of a shocker. He's got too much into that. And he's left the cue ball really close to the cushion. So now I think he might have to... He might have to jack down on this ball and really try and fire it in. Wow, where's the value of, uh, of potting this to? No, I think... I don't think he's got that much angle. I think he might have to top this ball in, come off two cushions and just back out... Extension cord. ...into the middle. Big shot here. Yeah, he's just going to pot this ball and come back out into the middle of the table. Oh, he's missed that by a lot. This is the problem. When you're not confident, you've not been playing, you just you don't fancy that type of shot. It's such a brutal type of shot. You've got to cue that ball so good. And as you can see, he's like, you know, he's nowhere near his work there. So let's see if Earl can negotiate this tough cut shot on the blue two. And if he does, he might be looking at an open table. Oh, wow. What a shot. He's just a brilliant pocketer of the ball, he's Earl. I mean, he's 56. He just got down and knocked that in like it was a, a gimme. And also the fact that he potted it direct and didn't knock a three away from the pocket made a big difference as well. Yeah. He's looking really good. When he is on, he is electrifying. We talked about his speed a lot. It was interesting that when he won the 1997 World Masters, and that's why he's here as a former winner, en route to capturing that title, he overcame the likes of Steve Davis. He beat Tommy Donlan in the final, but he also beat Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan. Wow. He played a bad shot there on the sixth zone. That's the problem. When you play super quick... You tend to, like, play a shot and, and land the wrong side. And he's on the cushion. He's, you're going to see him um, as he... Yeah, he doesn't have to jack up there. He's got a good angle there. I thought he had to just cue down a bit to create the angle, but he's fine there. So, I mean, when you play a bit too quick and you don't quite look at it where you want to be, you always leave yourself a bit of a shot to pull out. And this is not a gimme. It's for Earl Strickland, though. Well, thus far, it has been, living up to his nickname, a pearl of a performance. Earl Strickland, 4-1 ahead, playing some lovely stuff, and now he's halfway to the winning line. And it was uh, this miss right here. Well, when Darren Appleton's in top form, you would expect him to get that, but, uh, of course, he had to get back for that red three. A lot of calculations in that one, and then... This was a great cut shot here. Look at this. Feathers it in and gets position on the red three. And from there, it was off to the races in a 4-1 lead. I often wonder, you know, over those 56 years of his... How many racks of pool he's played? Oh, it's millions. God. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even like to hazard a guess. He was telling me today that he still plays eight hours a day. And he's made another ball there, and the one ball looks like it's going to come and sit OK, is it? Yeah, I think he can just snick this ball in. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, it's a dry break. I thought a ball went in. I must be hearing things. I was convinced I heard a ball drop in then. Well, now Darren Appleton, he needs to make something happen here. Yeah, he's got a... He has not really been fully in this match so far. Yeah, and it's crucial you don't give any more easy racks up. But this is a good chance, really. This is the shot now. Oh, where's the cue ball going? Oh, no. That's a poor shot. He didn't really get into that. And it was a, it was a pretty open table if he could have got on the two ball there. And now he's, he's in all kinds of trouble here. And he's...
and he's going to just play off here and try and kick this ball like that. It's a great kick shot. He doesn't want this in, though. He doesn't want it in because I think he was snookered. Sorry? Yeah. Earl's asking if he can use a jump key. <laughs> yeah, Earl comes from that school where he doesn't like jump cues. He thinks it's a, a, a cheap trick, you know, uh, a gimmick in the sport because, you know, Earl likes the beauty of the game where if you're snookered, you should have to use a Extension full gold. cue to get out of it. Well, let me tell you, he's got the jump stick in his hand, he, yeah. so he's not that bothered. He's, yeah, that's <laughs> right. No. Well, he, he really rushed that shot. Yeah, I mean, at, th at this level, Ted, I mean, most of the players would make that jump shot. And like you said, maybe because he's against the, the jump cue, maybe that's why he's not very good with it, because that was relatively easy, to be honest. Well, with a, a shot clock, why is the jump cue not already put together? Why did he have to good call. go into his case and waste seconds putting it all, all together? Great call. OK, he didn't know the rule, but basically he should have known the rule. Yeah, yeah. As I said, Earl tries to avoid using the jump cue at all costs. He just doesn't like it. He's a bit like, that's like how Efren Reyes is. I don't think I've ever seen Efren Reyes use a jump cue. That's a little bit like a golfer not being a fan of a sand wedge. <laughs> yeah. Needs must. Yeah, wants to get out of every trap with a pitching wedge, you know, like they did back in 1940 or something. You're the golf expert, aren't you, Ted? Played a bit in my day. So will that be a turning point? Appleton uh, with ball in hand. Now clearing the colors off the table. And... Uh, Right, just at the right time, back in the match. And this easy nine ball for 4 2 with the break. There it is. Yes, it was a much needed clearance from Darren Appleton in danger of becoming detached at one point. Strickland not happy. Appleton a little happier. It's 4-2. Welcome back to Gibraltar and the World Pool Masters. It's day two and the opening round. Earl Strickland's up against Darren Appleton. Strickland in charge of this match and showing signs of his form of old, running the rack out after Appleton's dry break. He leads 5-2 and is hoping to join Alex Pagaline and fellow American Shane Van Boning in the quarterfinals. It's a race to eight, Strickland to break in the eighth. Let's have another look at Earl's break. He's doing pretty good, and I mean, he's making balls. Well, this, this could be and good. This looks oh. set up really good for him. Yep. Look at this. Wow. Don't forget, the winner of this match plays Shane Van Boning. So right now, Earl looking very good. We could have a sensational All-American quarterfinal. Now he's got to play a nice little shot here just to get on the two. And this looks perfect. And he, he, what he might play... Because I don't think the four goes. He's just having a look now. I can't see Earl playing a, a plant. A lot of people back home think, oh, will he play the four onto nine? But I don't see that. And I, I mean, it, it does look pretty easy from that view, the overhead. I think he might pot this and just try and come into the gap and flick the nine ball. There you see, just flick that nine. He's got jacked up, though. Could see what he was trying to do there. He's not happy with He's that. Happy with that no. But again, he won't waste too much time. Great view of the fingers there. 
Oh, oh just barely. It's rattled and the pace, the spin on the balls just helped it drop. And now we've got to see a summer a bit specially. I'll tell you what, I'm surprised that went in at that pace and considering how far down the cushion it made contact with the cushion. Yeah, I think with this table, the shelf is quite shallow. So if it was a bit further back into the pocket, that ball would have definitely stayed up. Extension code. <laughs> Earl thinks it should be called a timeout. I think he's playing a bank shot here, is he? Oh, what, what, what's he done here? Oh, he's saying he had a skid there. I don't, I don't, I don't know what he's done there. <laughs> but he's been a little bit fortunate, to be honest. Yeah, I think it might have skidded. Because now Darren bridging over the nine, trying to pop this five ball when you've missed a couple of long shots and you've not really had a lot of table time. This is a brutal Extension shot. Code. It really is a brutal shot, this. And it's a big shot and all. This is a v this is the biggest shot of the match so far. Oh, delightful shot. That's going to give him so much confidence. Didn't seem comfortable at all on the initial bridge. Then he took his extension, calmed himself down, settled on the shot, and that was, as Carl said, potentially vital. That's kept him in the match, that. I mean, that could be a big, big swing right there. Because Earl should have run them balls out, really. And this... Yeah, could Earl have gone for that uh, five ball on the side? I mean, it was a sharp cut, but... I, I think he should have played a, an attacking shot there, even if he'd have played the bank shot and tried to screw off two cushions back round. I mean, he's a very attacking player. And I don't know, maybe the shot clock... I, he does play very quick, but I think the shot clock just was a bit too quick from there, and he, he didn't make his mind up. So here you see the, the choice to go safe which uh, left that shot open. Very difficult, though, with the bridging over the nine ball. Look at this. Perfection. Yeah, right in the heart of the pocket as well. That's going to give him a lot of confidence. Thank you, Rock Nine. Darren Appleton to break, trailing with three rocks to five. So Darren Appleton with a really good chance to get back into this match. Another Needs a ball break. down. Another good break. Is the one ball going in? No, the two ball? Nope. But he's no shot. I don't think he can pop this one ball. Just walking around to see where that one ball actually is. Because if it's touching the cushion and he can only hit full ball, oh, he's in a tricky spot here. He really is. He might even have to play a push shot. And that's what it's looking like, yeah. So he clearly can't pop that ball. And he's opened them up. I'm very surprised he's opened them up, to be honest. That was like a bit of an insurance policy, you know, because the three were tied up. Darren's had a quick look, said, not for me. Yep. There you go. Handed it back. That's the option on the push out. So he's trying to kick this aside rail, but I don't know where the one goes. It's a pretty good shot, to be fair. He's done well to get the one out. I thought it, the one might have rattled a bit more, but he did get it out. It was actually a better shot than it looked like. I don't think this is an American word, but he's a chuntra, isn't he? Oh, Chunters yeah. away all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Darren's in a, a spot of bother here. I mean, you can see the edge of the one, but 
Extension doesn't really goal. look like he's got much going on with it. You can see he's just looking down the line of the shot there. I think he's he's actually kicking at this ball. I think he's trying to come off the bottom cushion and hit the right side of the one ball. Yeah, he just hit it a bit full. This is a big frame now. Yeah, it really is. Be a big confidence booster also for Darren if he can win this safety battle. And he's played a poor one. He's left a shot of you. He tried to get the cue ball in behind the brown seven. Well, Earl puts his cue away. So he senses he might be sitting down for a minute. Oh, nicely done. Mm, I think that's not in the best position he would have wished for. Can he cut this ball back? Yeah, he's going to try and cut this ball in two rails and play the three. But yeah, that was easily done, actually. It's difficult when you sat in the box to sometimes see the uh, correct angle. Does he have to develop the five ball there, or does that go? It looks like it goes in the I corner. I think it goes, yeah. I think it goes in the top left pocket. This is a big rack now. It's just to pull it within one. Mm, I think he's going to have to play the five in the side now. He elected to bump into the six there. Just going to top this four ball through. Like so. Good shot. That's, that's really good. That's, that's lovely. He's looking pretty good in this, this rack now. This is the key shot. There it is. Appleton's renowned tenacity coming to the fore here. Exactly. You, you sense that right now he is finally finding his stroke. It's taken a while. He hasn't had a lot of uh, tournament time this year so far. The thing is with Darren is he knows the importance of certain racks in the match and he knows when to just step back, just give it that little bit more time. I know it might not be as exciting to watch us all running around the table, but it's about making no mistakes at crucial, crucial points. Oh, wow. Like What's that. What's happened there? Wow. I can't believe that. Shocking. He's queued right across that. And he, I don't know if Earl can cut this ball in. He's what he's done there is queued right across the cue ball and put some side on it and sent it into the rail. Now, can he cut this ball in or does he have to play the bank shot? He's playing the bank. Oh, and he's made it. Brilliant shot there. And he's, he's played that bank shot with screw back. So if you miss it, the spin spins the eight in. What a mistake that is, though. I can't believe that anyone in this field would miss that eight ball, let alone Darren Appleton when he got ahead of steam, it seemed. What a turnaround in momentum. And now the scoreline reads 6-3 in favour of Earl, the Pearl Strickland. The mood of Darren Appleton is just about as black as the eight ball he has just missed. Look at this. Hard to imagine that a player of his ability would allow a ball of that nature to go astray, but it did. Then Strickland banked the eight, added the nine, and that's why the man from stateside leads by six racks to, th to three. 
And the winner of this match will go on to the quarterfinals here at the World Pool Masters to play Shane Van Boning. He had a terrific performance earlier against Daryl Peach. Yeah, and Shane is sat in the crowd watching this match. One ball down and a cut shot. We've seen Earl make this shot before earlier in the match on the yes, two ball. You're right, Ted. And this rack is dependent on this shot and possibly four to the five if he gets this ball. And there you see it again. Brilliant at that shot, I must say, Earl. Now he's just making sure he gives himself the right angle because he's not got much of a gap there. As you can see, he's got to try and get in between the nine and the seven. So now, as you can see, he's gonna play two cushions here, I believe. And this is all about pace. Pace is everything here, just to land in that gap. There you see, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I think he's just got there. Pace was everything there. After potting this orange five, natural angle will just take you up table. Oh, <gasps> wow. Oh, Strickland. Well, he hasn't left anything easy for Darren Appleton. As he walked away from the table, the butt of the queue was driven into the floor in abject disgust. Pretty good safety shot there from Darren. You're trying to use the nine ball to hold the five up and get distance. And this is turning into another big frame now as well. I think he's left this, you know. And the cue goes again. Not good at disguising his emotions. I think that's an <laughs> understatement. <laughs> nope. Oh, that's unfortunate. I think he's going to play the bottom cushion on my lines and try and hit this six ball so the six ball goes up the cushion and the white jams on the seven. Maybe you can see this. I don't. I didn't think he could see the edge. No, I think this is the correct shot. Bottom cushion. Just try and bump the six up and get the snooker behind the seven. Has he got it? I don't know. Has he left the shot? I don't think he has, because I think Earl would have got down and smashed it in by now. So it's a pretty good shot from Darren there. Yeah, he's, he's definitely got him there. Earl might have to go off the cushion. He's just looking to see if he's got an extension. Extension code. <laughs> he said timeout again. He refuses to say the word extension. Yeah. But you see, it's not a timeout because a timeout, when there's a shot clock involved, is actually an unlimited amount of time. He needs this ball to hold up, and it's not going to. I think he's left it. So, yes. And here we go. Another chance for Darren Appleton to get back in the match, and this time he cannot let it slip away. <sighs> barely. That barely went in. Went off the both jaws. And now, I think he's landed a little bit funny. He's putting the extension on the queue. He's playing around with the little extension. That looks pretty good. Yeah, that's perfect. You can just play a little screw back now on the black. Right back down for the nine. There you go. Oh, it's okay. a big frame to steal, that one. I will give Darren Appleton credit, and, and this is what you would expect from a player like him. He is battling. 
Uh, Earl will be kicking himself, though. He played a, <laughs> he, he played a good you rack, said it. and he got on the five ball. And if he makes the five, he's, he's won the rack, and he's seven three up. And you don't see him losing from there. All of a sudden, it's six four. And if Darren can break and run now, six five, it's anybody's match. And you can see, look, Early's fuming with himself there. Thank you, rack eleven. Darren a potent break, trailing with four racks to six. And he's not had much success off the break yet. He needs to make a ball. And he's got the ball. it. And the cue ball, he's not in. And he's made three balls on the break. And he does have a shot. But it's into the pocket where he missed the two ball early on in the match. And the cue ball is on the cushion. I'm not sure if he can pot this and run through. Has he got too much angle? Yes, it's a, a magical combination of numbers in snooker. It's one four seven. He's knocked in. <laughs> How have you spotted that one? That's brilliant. That's tremendous. What a tough shot here. Nope. He's just not knocking them, them crunch balls in, is he? The only saving grace is I think Earl's got quite a big angle on this and he's obviously bridging over the three, so the three ball's hampering him. I don't think he can pop this and hold. Extension code. He said the word extension, that's the magic word. <laughs> Now, is he going to try and cut this ball in? Is he playing safe? He's playing... Oh, he's oh. having a shocker. Oh, he's sure. played the bank shot in the ball side, ahead. and he's hit that so bad. I'll tell you, you, you could make the case right now that Earl's uh, falling apart. Yeah, I think we've got a new favourite in this match. So if Darren takes these balls out now, I think there's a new favourite in the match, which is unbelievable from when Darren missed that eight ball. You just wouldn't think this would have happened. What has he played here? Whoa, look out. Darren, that is one of the worst shots I've ever seen you play. All he's got to do is get down on the bottom cushion with ball in hand, and he's out. Any match involving Earl Strickland is great viewing. Any match involving Darren Appleton, the same. But what's so intriguing about this one, some of the mistakes you cannot believe and he can't even go off the side cushion, you know, to even have a chance of, of potting the three. That's the problem with this shot now. He's in all kinds. I'm just wondering if he goes, can he go three cushions? He, he's gonna go sort of that way. And he can oh, made it. he's made it. Brilliant. This is it. It's all happening. Fantastic effort from Darren Appleton. What a grinder he is today. Earl's having a chuckle to himself there. This is... I mean, that's unreal. But it's not over yet. He's got yeah. a brutal shot here. Oh, wow. He's made it. That's another good shot there, though. Wow, what a rack this has been. And what a mixture of brilliance and blunders. Yeah, the highs and lows. But I, right now, I, I fancy Appleton. I think that uh, he is uh, more in this match. I mean, uh, that Earl just seems to have fallen apart here. Yeah, I think... I think that could be a sign. When you play a bad shot and you snook yourself and you kick two rails like it goes in, you run out. That was that was special. And look at this. A scratch from Earl Strickland. And then look at this. 
two rail, kick shot, pots the three, pots the five, runs it out, six to five. Now a chance to tie. Yes, and if you're just joining us. Thank you. Rack 12, Darren Appleton to break, trailing with five racks to six. Even though Appleton's right back in this, at one point, at his lowest ebbs, he was 4-1 and 5-2 down. He's got and the he's one ball down. Again, good break. And he's got a shot, you know. This, <laughs> these long cut shots on the two have not been his favorite shots, though, today. No, and it's, it's sort of the shot of the rat, really, with where the balls are spread out. He knows if he pots this ball, he will fancy running the table. It's all about this shot. And it's, it's, it's another big frame. Because Earl's just one away from getting on the hill. Good shot. Good shot. I think he's going to draw this ball right back now. Full length. And he's just got to make sure he doesn't go near that middle pocket. Oh, he was nowhere near it. Is it this like a treat? Look at this. He got into that beautiful. Do you think that's a sign that he's uh, really feeling it now? Yeah. Loose, well, I, confident. I, I just think when Earl missed that um, five ball to get on the hill, it gave him a bit of a G up. But when Darren snooked himself, I mean, he made a great hit to get out of the snooker, but there was an element of luck in that shot. And I think that was the big turning point because it could have, you know, still... Earl could have been 7-4 up, if you like, but instead it was 6-5. It, it was a crucial point. You can see Earl is fuming here. He's, he's ready to blow, I'm telling you. Well, whatever happens, we're already guaranteed the closest match of the tournament so far. And this could go hill-hill quite easily. Great stuff here from Darren Appleton. There were several times, about 30, 40 minutes ago, he was looked like he was completely out of it, not just in the score line, but mentally didn't even want to be here, it seemed like. But he is the ultimate grinder, isn't he? 6-6, six, six, who would have thought it? So we started out as the best of 15 racks, a race to eight. Now it's down to the best of three. It all distills down to three highly pressurized racks of pool and there's no doubt the man with the momentum it is that man darren appleton so this is the break and it was a cruncher struck that one so sweetly and then all the hard work was done and just a pretty elementary nine ball across the the top cushion and with that Darren Appleton is back on level terms. It is 6-6. Six, six. This after being 4-1, 5-2, and 6-3 behind. And he's made a ball. And he's got oh. a shot, has it? Where's the two ball going? Is he going to stop yeah. for a plant? Eey, I'm not so sure. Like it <laughs> the last second, the two came in to spoil the party. Good old nine ball. I don't think he can play. If he can play the plant, he's got to hit the very extreme edge of the one ball. Yeah, I think he might have half a chance here, you know. The good thing with this shot is after he's if he makes this plant, the cue ball is going to come round. So he should be on the one, as long as the one ball doesn't go near the seven and tie up. And there you see, this looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. And, you know, I think the four passes the five, so he's, he's got a good chance here, you know, to get on the hill. Who would have thought he'd be on the hill before Strickland? Incredible. But this is the makeup of the man and why he was 
such a stalwart in seven consecutive winning Moscone Cup teams. Solid, dependable. Yeah, he's just having a look at the six. That's the big ball in in this rack now. That is perfect. Just got to make sure you avoid the middle. Sometimes you can hit the middle pointer. It's got a nice angle. There you see it. I mean, he must be just burning with confidence right now. After uh, being down 5-2, then it was 5-3, 6-3, and Earl looked like he was about to go on the hill. And now it looks like Appleton will be on the hill with this nine. There it is. Amazing turnaround. What a fight back from dynamite Darren Appleton. Yeah, transformation indeed. For the first time, Strickland impassive. He realizes that he could well have missed the boat here because, let's face it, he wasn't just in front. He was in front and playing the far superior pool. And then it all just changed around. A couple of key mistakes, a couple of little bits of fortune for Appleton. And the match now seems to be slipping away from the pearl. Thank you, rack 14. Darren Appleton to break, leading with seven racks to six. He will love a ball on this break and, a, and an easy layout. And he's made a ball, but don't... Two oh, he balls. has got a shot, you know? He has got a shot. It's just peaked out so he can make it. But he's got to try and pop this ball and come all the way down and find a little gap. Anywhere around this circle, he would love to land around there. He's got to pop this ball and come all the way down and try and land in this gap, roughly around that circle. Oh. I, I think, think he did it. I think he's got there, you know. Needs to hold up a bit. He'll be happy with that. Certainly will. I think he can pop this ball now and just use the nine as a bit of a stopper for the cue ball. I think he's I think he's good here. This is the key shot now. If this goes right, he's won the match. Oh no. Is he on it? I think he's on it. I don't know. Hard to tell from that angle. He's definitely on it because he would be fuming. Yeah. Yeah, he's on it. That needs to travel. Oh, he's landed the wrong side. He needed another two balls up. Another two balls further up the table and this match was over. I don't know if he can draw this ball in and come right back with side now. I think he is. I think he's got to screw this ball back with side. There you see. And another nudge. He's dicing with a nine ball. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good though, you know. This is nervy. I think that's all she wrote, fellas. This is the shot now. Pop this ball. The angle's going to go right up table. For the eight. And from six, three down. These last two balls for the victory. Well, he's going to be feeling pretty good about this victory. 
having uh, clawed his way back in, but he's going to have to up his game even more against Shane Van Boning, who played brilliantly earlier. It was, though, the mark of the man, Darren Appleton. What a pool fighter. We've seen it on so many occasions, particularly in a team environment when he's representing Europe. And now, as an individual, great comeback to de deny Earl the Pearl Strickland. He was 6-3 down, and he has won by eight racks to six. A remarkable match that saw Strickland denied a place in the quarterfinals by Darren Appleton. Appleton joined Shane Van Boning and Alex Pagaline in the next round. The next session will see the conclusion of round one in matches featuring Chris Melling, Dennis Orcolo, Jason Shaw and Joshua Filler. And then we have our first quarterfinal, Carl Boyce taking on the Masters' most successful player, Ralph Suke.